Throughout the medieval and early modern periods, commanders experimented with numerous strategies to counter the dominant force of heavily armored knights. Terrain choice played a crucial role, as demonstrated by the Scots at the Battle of Loudoun Hill in 1307, using geography to their advantage. Similarly, the Flemish at the Battle of Courtrai in 1302 and the English at Crecy in 1346 turned the battlefield to their favor with careful positioning. The Swiss refined the use of deep pike squares at Nancy in 1477, a tactic later adopted by the German Landsknechte at Bicocca in 1522, and the Spanish Tercio at Rochroy in 1643, showcasing the evolution of infantry formations designed to withstand cavalry charges. Then came the Hussites in the 1400s, who turned their wagons into the medieval equivalent of tanks. Armed with nothing more than farming tools, early firearms, and a knack for turning, you shall not pass. Into a tactical advantage, they redefined medieval warfare. This wasn't just a fight, it was a performance, showcasing the ultimate underdog victory in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. The Hussites, followers of Jan Hus, were not just early adopters of religious reform but also of unconventional warfare. Their movement was a mix of spiritual fervor and the medieval version of stand up for your rights, leading to a series of conflicts known as the Hussite Wars. These weren't mere skirmishes, but a full-blown revolution that shook the foundations of medieval society. And Zizka, a military strategist who could probably give Sun Tzu a run for his money, wasn't your average Joe. Before becoming the nightmare of the armored knight community, Zizka cut his teeth in various battles across Europe, notably at Grunwald in 1410. His transition from mercenary to the leader of the Hussite forces was less about a career change and more about finding the perfect outlet for his outside-the-box military tactics. The year is 1420, the place Sudomnes, a location about to witness this classic underdog story. Zizka, with an army that's more Farmville than knightly valor, faces a sea of shiny armored knights. The twist? He's got wagons, not your average farmer's market there, but fortified battle wagons, the medieval answer to a Swiss army knife. Zizka, who could probably turn a spoon into a siege weapon if he wanted, looks at the terrain. Swamp. Perfect. He thinks because nothing says welcome like a muddy bog to slow down those metal-clad horses. As the enemy charges, visions of easy victory turn into a slapstick routine of knights floundering in mud. But it's not just about the terrain. Zizka's got artillery, early handguns, and let's not forget the flail. Because why not turn farming tools into weapons? It's like repurposing your lawnmower to cut down the enemy. Pure genius. The Battle of Sudamias wasn't just a victory, it was a statement. Give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, and we'll turn them into a formidable army with nothing but wagons and sheer wit. This wasn't just warfare, it was warfare with style. Jishka showed the world that with a bit of innovation and a good swamp, you could turn the tide of battle. His legacy, a testament to the power of thinking outside the box or the wagon and a reminder that sometimes the best weapon is a good strategy, and maybe a few wagons. The Hussite wagon forts under Jean Zizka's command were a feat of military engineering. Built from sturdy oak, these wagons were reinforced with iron and leather, making them resistant to arrows and light melee weapons. Some were equipped with primitive cannons and handguns, marking the early integration of gunpowder in European warfare. The wagons were strategically arranged in circular or oval formations, providing 360-degree protection and creating a formidable barrier against cavalry charges. These mobile forts played pivotal roles in numerous battles. For example, at the Battle of Sudomies in 1420, the Hussites, significantly outnumbered, leveraged their wagon fort to neutralize the mobility of the enemy's cavalry, securing a decisive victory. Similarly, at the Battle of Kutna Hora in 1421, the Hussites again used their wagons to great effect, repelling superior forces through superior tactics 
and the defensive strength of their wagon fort. However, as warfare evolved, so did the means to counter wagon forts. The advent of more powerful artillery and changes in battle tactics reduced their effectiveness. The increased firepower could penetrate or bypass the wagon defenses, and strategic maneuvers began to outflank and isolate the forts. By the late 15th and early 16th centuries, the rise of professional standing armies and the development of fortifications rendered the wagon fort less practical in European warfare, signaling the end of its widespread use. In sum, the Hussite wagon forts represented a unique and innovative approach to warfare in the medieval period, demonstrating the power of tactical creativity and adaptation. Their success in numerous battles against better equipped foes is a testament to their design and the strategic acumen of leaders, like Jan Zizka. Yet, as with all military innovations, the march of progress and the evolution of counter-strategies eventually diminish their utility on the battlefield. If you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time.